What's going on guys? It's Will Kelly here with Military Lawn Cuts where we did almost $600,000 in annual revenue last year. And just a year before that we did about 325,000. So we had a huge exponential growth last year and we learned some very hard lessons that I'm going to share today with you to hopefully help you get to where we are at with a much smoother process. So I'm just gonna go ahead and read this board that I had showed you guys at the beginning, but some of the key bullet points on here, which you know I can probably hold them up as I'm kind of talking to them or through them, is one of the biggest things was May was extremely difficult to find workers to fulfill all the new work from Spring Rush, so be ready. So what does that mean? So when you're growing from $325,000 in annual gross sales top line to $600,000, there's a lot of logistics that goes into it. There's a lot of phone calls that come through. There's a lot of employees that you have to hire and train and you have to have proper systems in place. Otherwise you are going to literally pull your hair out during the spring rush. So I remember last year during our exponential growth, what happened was we sent out 30,000 flyers for uh, new growth and new business, and we were slammed with phone calls. So we were super busy in the office, and what we were doing, we were signing up all of these new customers, but I didn't have the right personnel in place to conduct the work, especially as we started getting into, so March, April, huge onboarding, new customers, and things like that. But what happened was the temperature started to rise. It started to get hotter. We didn't have the right personnel in place. And so hopefully you guys don't make the same mistake if you're looking at growing that fast. So um, what we found was May was an extremely hard month to hire because we found that a lot of other lawn care companies are kind of going through that same process of, hey, they have now all this work and they need help to conduct the work and get it done. And so if everybody else is trying to find workers, it's going to be the, the worker pool is going to be much less. So that is a key thing. You always want to try to hire before you need the people if the finances allow you to do so. So number two on the board is start weekly mowing sooner. So just so you guys know, so we have one mow schedule. So what that looks like is we always start off the season. March 1st is when our mowing season starts. We start off all of our customers on a bi-weekly rotation. So we come there every other week. And then generally speaking, sometime in April, once the weather warms up and the grass comes completely out of dormancy, we shift all of our customers over to weekly service. And really the reason for that is because all of our customers are on our fertilizing and weed control program. So as long as they are watering their lawns and getting fertilized, which all of them are, the grass really will be growing at a rate that it does need to get cut weekly. The other thing that we tell the customers is if you wait to mow the lawn uh, 14 days while it has that much growth, taking uh, that much off, uh, taking too much off the grass can actually damage the grass, damage the lawn. And that's the last thing we wanna do as, as a company is damage a customer's lawn. I put this in here to start weekly mowing sooner. I think last year I was kind of freaking out a little bit that we didn't have enough personnel in place, especially with onboarding all of these new customers. So what we did was we waited to go weekly too late and we started our fertilizer rounds and the grass was starting to get a lot taller and it was taking our team a lot longer to cut these lawns. And had we just switched to weekly mowing sooner, they would have been in and out of the properties and were, would be able to maintain a lot more properties quicker and efficiently because they didn't have to take too much off of each, each visit. Okay, one of my other key points here is October is a breeze. So the reason I put this in here is, again, we're down in Texas, North Texas, and come October, that is when the temperatures finally start to cool off. So um, it does start in mid-September, but by October, it's easy because you're talking 7 degree, 70 degree weather and it's cool out. It's a lot of times cloudy. So 
what this reminder is, is if we start to lose a guy or two towards the end of August or even early September, you shouldn't freak out about it or say, oh my goodness, I got to find a replacement because we all know that October is a breeze. However, we know that October is going to be much easier on the guys. It's not as hot. They're not going to get as dehydrated and they're going to be able to produce more, especially on P4P. So there's no reason to stress if somebody leaves towards the end of August or even sometime in September because you'll be able to do as much work with less people. Okay, let's move forward here. November 1st of 2022 was the first time that Larissa and I started to take owner's distributions from the company. So we have built our business and basically we started from absolutely nothing. So um, I started with a Grand Prix and was putting the mower in the back seat and eventually the transmission gave out on that. I sold the Grand Prix after I got the transmission fixed and we bought a our first F-150 truck. Now from there we did put in our own money. I spent $5,000 on our very first truck and I bought a $100 mower off of Facebook Marketplace but outside of that all of the money that we have made in the business, we have been rolling it over and over for the last three and a half years to grow it to what it is today, doing just shy of $600,000. So, very exciting news. After three and a half years of hard work, grind, hustle, blood, sweat, and tears, we are finally able to start to take owner's distributions and reap the rewards that we have been striving for. So that's super exciting. Um, that was one of our key points here because uh, we have grown so much that we are shifting to profit mode now. All right, so this is another great tip here. So when, so this is, stands for Wednesday, be lighter with room for margin. Okay, what does that mean? This basically means, so we work five days a week. We try not to work on Saturdays. We never work on Sundays because we are a faith-based company. I don't care how backed up we are, but generally speaking, we try to, we used to put the lighter load on Fridays. So they would, the guys would come out, our crews would come out and they would work extremely hard Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And by Friday, they're drained. They don't want to get up. Their body hurts. They're exhausted. They're dehydrated. Just a lot of physical labor blue collar type work, right? Working hard four days in a row is tough. So what we've learned is to make Wednesday during the week a lighter route. So that way it gives them somewhat of a little bit of a rest day. And it also allows room for error or margin because when the truck breaks down, you're going to need to schedule things. When somebody calls off last minute, again, you're gonna to need to schedule things. When rain comes, you're gonna to have to schedule things. So you cannot pack the house five days a week in your routes and expect there you not to have to work on Saturdays. I don't like I don't like working on Saturdays. So what we do is we make Wednesday a little bit lighter route, and guess what? If it doesn't rain that week and no trucks break down and everybody shows up for their shift, then great. Everybody gets to go home a little bit early on Wednesday. They have a lighter day. And what it does is it gives them that extra boost, that extra energy to continue to work hard for the next two days before the weekend of two days rest. Last and final point, but a very, very important point here is background and drug tests, okay? I will be the first to tell you that we did not do drug tests or background checks our first three years in business. And we have learned that this, if you want quality candidates and you want people that will show up on time, day in and day out, and not getting involved in extracurricular activities, negative activities outside of work, this needs to be done. And it has absolutely revolutionized our business and it has created a much higher level of talent, quality, and culture. Weeding out 
the nonsense that is not good for the culture, the extracurricular things that happen outside, getting into drugs, getting into criminal backgrounds and things like that. It's very, very important as you grow and scale for the legitimacy of your business and to protect your reputation to do background checks and drug tests. That is all I got to share with you guys today, but those are the absolute key things, the key details that I wrote down on this board. And when I'm in the moment and I feel that pain and I'm going through that and I write it down on this board, it allows me to remember it during the off season or the next year of how important that that point was for me to put this on the board of the 20 to the 2022 keynotes. So that is some true hard lessons that we learned from going from $325,000 to $600,000 and basically almost doubling our business. Um, so if you guys rate, if you guys found value in this content, do me a favor. Subscribe to the channel because we're going to be able to give you more and more great content just like this. Smash the like button. Leave a comment down below on what you learned last year. I'm curious to know what you guys learned, the life lessons, the business lessons that you guys learned in your business last year. So that way we can share that with the community. We'll see you guys next time.